This has to be the best lens, hands down for Astro. Hey guys, thanks for joining me again for another night out here under the stars. If you're new to the channel, welcome along. If you're not new, welcome back. So tonight, I'm pretty excited and I can't remember the last time I was this pumped to try out a new bit of gear. Now, I'm gonna be trying out the Sigma 40 uh, 1.4, so the Sigma Art. 41.4 and I don't think I've ever been sort of as excited or anxious to try out a bit of kit and it's a little bit strange but the reputation that that lens has really precedes it and if it does what it's supposed to do it's it's going to change everything in the way I image um, but if it doesn't do what you know the reputation has it doing I think I'll be a bit disappointed so at the moment I'm not sure what I'm going to end up with but um yeah, stick around and find out. So to understand why this could be a complete game changer for me is purely about aperture. Now, every time I've bought a lens in the past, and probably you guys too, you'll always buy, you know, wide aperture glass, you know, prime glass like 1.4s, knowing that you're going to have to shoot it at, you know, f2, f2.8, you know, to make sure it's sharp from corner to corner but what if you could shoot a lens wide open at f1.4 and have it sharp from corner to corner now what that means for me is you know my normal settings are about iso 640 three minute exposures and f2.8 that's about what i normally go to now if i keep my iso at the the same iso at 640 but i shoot at f1.4 uh, 1.4 is almost two full stops wider than f2.8 so that means I could get my exposure time from three minutes down to about 45 seconds which is crazy and for me if you've been following along for a while you'll know that you know some of my panoramas take hours you know three hours to shoot four hours to shoot and that's purely because I'm using a focal length and a shutter speed that means it just you know purely takes that long but if I could do 45 second shutter speeds and capture the same amount, as, uh, same amount of light as what I used to, all these huge tracked panoramas could be done in, you know, an hour. And that really, really excites me. So I've made my way out here and found this cool old tree, this old skeleton of a pine tree. Who doesn't love an old, you know, dead tree with a Milky Way going over it? It's cliche, I know, but I love it. Um, with that said, I didn't really mind about what foreground I shot tonight because, you know, tonight's not about the foreground for me or trying to get, you know, an award-winning image or a game-changing image or anything like that. Tonight was purely about testing this lens, but um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to shoot this tree. And the plan for tonight is, same as usual, nice big wide panorama. Um, I'm still not sure what part of the Milky Way I'm going to image, if I'm going to image early and you know have the milky way right on the eastern horizon and have a bit of summer milky way there or wait a bit longer and get you know the milky way core more overhead so i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do there yet but um we're just going to hang out here and wait for it to get darker and then shoot a foreground Well, that's the foreground all taken care of. Um, I've done it a little bit unusual with the settings, but that was just to sort of test out this lens. I obviously waited for twilight to get the, the foreground shot just to help us out, reduce that noise a little bit. Um, I ended up shooting 30 seconds f1.4 and ISO 2000. Now, I wouldn't normally shoot the foreground with those crazy settings. I'd normally, you know, go out to a couple of minutes and stop that lens down to try and increase that depth of field a little bit. But um, this was this whole process is about testing this lens out at f1.4. So why not? Um, the depth of field is obviously really, really shallow. Um, but you know, it's not really about the foreground. So that's in the bag. So all I'm going to do now is chill out for a bit, have a couple of beers and wait for the Milky Way to get where it needs to be. Righto, it's the moment of truth. I've ripped off a test shot, f1.4, ISO 640, and 50 seconds. So, 
Come on, baby. Oh, wow. It looks sharp. Let's zoom in and have a look. This has to be the best lens, hands down for Astro. I, I honestly, <laughs> wow, I can't believe what I'm seeing. It is, that's just perfect from corner to corner at f1.4. Oh, this is gonna be a good night. So she's all done. Apologies for no time lapse. I do like to put time lapses in there to show you guys what's going on and um, the process and all that, but we hit dew point pretty hard. This lens is probably fogging up as we speak. Um, and I don't know where my other lens warmer is, so no time lapse. Um, but what a night. I, I'm absolutely chuffed. The biggest downfall with this lens was why didn't I buy it sooner? I just don't know what I've done with myself for the past couple of years without that. Um, yeah, phenomenal. So, being that it's 40 mil and it's a little bit obviously tighter than you know my normal go-to lens, I normally shoot at 35 mil um, a lot. I needed four rows high to capture the whole Milky Way art. So it was about 13 or 14 images wide and four rows high. And I ended up with f1.4, ISO 640, and one minute exposures which is awesome so i just blazed through that panorama um i've never done a panorama so quick um i will do a full review on that lens and go a bit more in depth and show you know single raw files and things like that but um for now i'm pretty chuffed with how this is this image has come up i really hope you guys enjoy the image it's been awesome being out under the stars again and um thanks so much for joining and until next time cheers guys